Good morning. We are so excited to worship with you this morning. Jesus is risen. It is Easter Sunday, and uh, it's the most different Easter Sunday than I can ever remember, but hey, we're going to worship, and we're going to celebrate uh, this most glorious day that Jesus rose from the dead. And so if you would please uh, take this time to worship with us, celebrate, and then just invite the Holy Spirit that connects us to God and connects us to each other and just brings us into all truth. We just pray that you would join us in this worship and that we could sing together and celebrate what Jesus did this morning. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope, with no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested and my life began. And ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance When death was arrested and my life began Oh, your grace so free washes over me You have made me new, now life begins with you It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new, now life begins with you. Released from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom, he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend When death was arrested and my life began Oh, your grace so free washes Rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom. Arrested and my life. 
life began. Amen. Good morning, everybody. United Covenant Church and all watching is so good to be together this morning as we celebrate Easter together. He is risen, and I'll do your part. He is risen indeed, and it is so good again to be together even in this way. So let's go through just a couple of quick announcements as we get going, and we will continue with our Easter celebration. Uh, the first slide you will see is actually different uh, than the last couple weeks. It is Kids Blast. We are doing every Friday at 2 p.m. on right here on our Facebook Live page, and we look forward to seeing you all or all your kids, or if you know any neighbor kids who would want to join us for this, uh, it's, it'll be a lot of fun. We'll do a couple Kids Blast songs, and we'll have a Kids Blast story, and we may even have some special friends join us in the next couple weeks. So please be with us for that every 2 p.m. on Friday. So uh, that will keep going until we don't know when, whenever this is, uh, we can meet again in person. So that's Kids Blast. The next thing, just if you need to find us, if you want to watch our services or find all the things we've been posting, Pastor Dan is doing different uh, devos every single morning, fr uh, Monday through Friday. So you can find those at facebook.com slash united cove and that's where you'll find us otherwise and the next slide will say this you can go to www.unitedcovechurch.org and find our videos there the other thing is if you would like to give your offering um, you can bring your offering to us uh, or uh, hand it to us personally or you can go to our website unitedcovechurch.org and on there there is a uh, giving tab and you can click on that it says online giving and then there it will walk you through how to sign up for online giving. So those are the different ways that you can still continue to give your tithes and your offerings during this time. The last thing is if you have prayer requests that you would like to be given and so that Pastor Dan, myself, and the prayer team can pray for them or have them prayed for during the service, you may email those to uh, the church. You can email them to my email, which is Zach, uh, Z-A-C-H, Dot ucc at gmail.com or feel free to always call us during the week. Somebody will be here to answer your phone call. 715-263-2665. Again, it is so great to be together on this Easter morning as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this is the time where we would normally say to the room of people that it is now time to greet your neighbors. And guess what? We actually can greet our neighbors this morning. So take a look at greeting our neighbors. Hey, everybody. It's Easter Sunday. Woo! We miss everybody. Wish we were all together in church for breakfast and the great service. But here we are, social distancing. We even have a post between us. Bonnie? God bless you. We love you and miss you. Hi everyone, this is Brenda Cogdell. I miss you all so very much and I just really hope that we can get together soon. I can't wait till this is all over, but I, I just want to give everybody a big hug and a handshake and, and tell them that Jesus loves them. Thank you so much. Love you. God, God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Yay! We miss you. He is risen. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Happy Mr. Resurrection Day. Day. Hi, everyone. We're Carl and LeVon, and we're just praying that God will grant you peace and grace during these days. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. We, we, we miss you, everyone. We're doing well. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. We miss you. I hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. God bless you. And we'll see you very soon. Christ is risen. <laughs> he is risen indeed. Happy Easter. Easter. Happy miss Easter. you, church family. Yeah, happy Easter. Love you guys. Greetings, everybody. <laughs> happy Easter. Nice to see you. <laughs> hope you have a good Easter. Hi, everybody. Good to see you. I don't really see you, but good to see you. Um, this too shall pass. God is in control. Take time to witness to neighbors. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. We're glad you could join us. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, glad to be with you in this way, since we can't be together at our 
church base and just everybody take care follow our safe distance things and we're gonna get through this like Cindy says God is good and uh, I'm under his protection but being safe hello from the Keller family hope everybody's doing okay we, we miss everyone and we want to tell everybody happy, happy Easter. Easter good morning I'm Terry Silverberg and I'm Jenny Silverberg we're sending love and greetings on this beautiful Easter morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Well, I am just sitting here waiting for the day when Mary Benson and Ruth Sneen can come and sit with me in church again. Happy Easter to everybody. Hello from the Carlsons. And don't even think about coming for our toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Wish we could all be together for Easter, but Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Miss everybody. Bye. Hello, my church family. I miss you. Love you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Hi, everybody. This is me walking again, and I sure miss you guys, and I miss the church. Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful day. We, I miss church and I miss all the people. And so I'm um, praying that we get back there soon, okay? Happy Easter. Hello, everybody. Hello. Happy Easter. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hope you're all uh, staying safe at home and we miss you and just wanted to say Christ is, is risen. risen. He is risen indeed. Hello. Uh, stay healthy. Hello. We're feeling good, doing good. Glad to see you. Wish we could see you more often. We miss church. Hi, Hello. from the Stream family. Hi, from Little Lamb. Hi, Yolanda. Hi. Okay. Hi. Hi, from Gina, Lizzie, and Grace. Hi everyone from the, here from the Lindens. Happy Easter. Don't forget Jesus is the reason for the season. That means Easter as well as Christmas. So hope, have a blessed Easter. Stay safe and remember what's important. Hi from the Thayer family. We just want to say hi to everyone and we miss you and hope to see you soon. Hope everyone's doing good. Hello from Deer Park, Wisconsin. We're wishing you a happy Easter. We are staying at home. We're feeling good. All is well with you. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter to all people of United Covenant Church and others who are listening to Facebook. It would be great if I could shake your hand and say it to you in person. I am looking at the positive side when I read in his word, which gives us comforting words that Christ is the creator and sustainer of all things. Christ will keep you steady in unsteady times. Christ is near you and enough for us when we feel helpless. I'm looking forward to the Sunday when we can meet again in our church. May God bless you all. This next song is such a great song. It goes, tells the whole story of Jesus' life as 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 flesh and blood on earth from Christmas and being born through Easter now. And even tells of the forecoming time when he will come again to, uh, on that glorious day to take us with him to heaven. And so just remember the whole story as we sing through this song together. came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. The word became flesh and the light shined among us, his glory revealed. 
Living, He loved me. Dying, He saved me. Buried, He carried my sins far away. Rising, He justified freely forever. One day He's coming, O oh, glorious day, O oh, glorious day. for the beautiful completeness of this story, how you know, our sins were as black as could be, and you sent your son to experience the same temptations, the same struggles we had, but that he lived the perfect example, and he laid down his life for us, his friends. But he did not stay in the grave, but no, he rose from the dead. 
and will come again to take us into glory with him. And we just so eagerly await that day as we strive to live more like Christ and to just tell others about him as well. We thank you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, welcome once again. Thank you for being here and tuning in to our service. And we're just so thankful that for this technology that we have to be able to, even though we're really limited, you know, on what we can do. And, um, but you know what? Thank the Lord again for the fact that we can be right in your homes and join with you in worship. And, and by the way, we're just you know, obviously all around the world, people are doing the same thing. So we're just so thankful. Um, and I just want to say, um, you know, the greeting thing that we had earlier with all the thank you for, um, for those of you that were able to do that. And, you know, next week we're going to be back here. So if you didn't get a chance to be in that greeting thing, um, just contact the church here, contact Zach, and we will, we will go ahead and, and get you into the next greeting next week because we'll try to do it again but I just got to say thanks to Zach for you know he went around to every one of those places every one of those people except for Solid Rock and um, he filmed everyone and so thank you to Zach he's just been such a big help with all the technology lately and want to just acknowledge that thank you so much Zach and it's really fun to see those things anyway so um Years ago, when I was in seminary studying to be a pastor, um, one of the things I did one summer was I worked as a hospital chaplain. And, you know, when, when there was, uh, at the hospital there, when there was an emergency, you know, maybe somebody would be in a car accident or have a heart attack or something. I, my job was to be with the family. If they wanted me to be with them, I would be with them and I'd pray with them. I'd you know, just spend time with them as we waited to hear um, what was going on with their loved one. And sometimes I actually, before the family got there, sometimes I even knew what was going on with them. I remember one instance, I, I happened to know that the person had died in a, um, with a heart attack, but I was not legally able to say that. Because it had to be the doctor, it had to be the medical professional that would come in and tell them the news and, and make that pronouncement. And, you know, I, I really think that that is, that's how it should be. You know, the medical professional doctor needs to come in and be the one that makes that, um, that says what's actually going on. So, but, you know, if you go back in history, there was a time when medicine was a little less exact than it is now. And um, if you go far enough back, there were instances where people might be in a coma and they might just, you know, they, they might uh, try to bury that person. I mean, think about how horrible that would be, especially if you woke up. And there were instances where people would wake up from a coma right before they got put in. But the big fear, a fear that people had back in those times was to be buried alive. And I found a couple uh, quotes here. Here's from our first president, George Washington, on his deathbed. This was his request. He said, he says, have me decently buried, but don't let my body be put into a vault in less than two days after I'm dead. In other words, let me lay out for two days before, make sure before I have to go in the ground. You know, he wanted to be sure that he was really gone. Um, here's Frederick Chopin, the famous composer. This was his last words. He says, swear to make them cut me open so that I won't be buried alive. Wow. You know, so this was a real fear that people had. Um, now, we think of our Lord, and we remember how he went to the cross for us, and they put him in the grave. But I can assure you that he was not buried alive. You know, some people have speculated, there, there used to be a theory called the swoon theory, 
And the swoon theory was that Jesus had simply maybe passed out or gone into a coma. And then a couple days later when he was in the grave, he woke up and pushed the stone away and came out. But there's no, let's just say that there's no um, credible scholar today that would, you know, hold on to that theory. Because um, we know about crucifixion. Crucifixion was a horrible, torturous death. And there's no way that Christ could have survived what he went through. And in fact, we also know that uh, the Romans were experts at it. They had been doing it for hundreds of years. They knew what they were doing. And when Pilate asked in the scriptures, when Pilate asked if Christ were actually dead, they, they pierced his side with a spear and water and blood came out, which is a sure sign that Christ was indeed dead. Okay, so... When there's water and blood, that's a sign that the heart has stopped functioning. And so he really was dead. So we know that he, he really died. But we also know from the scriptures why he died. And the reason that Christ died was to pay for your sins and mine, to pay for the sins of the world. That's what his mission was here on earth when he came. And, and there was so many prophecies written about how the Christ, how the Messiah, the Son of God, would come and suffer and die, and on the third day he would rise again. And of course, Jesus had said this to his disciples many times. And um, anyway, I just think it's important this morning that we actually look at the scriptures, and we're going to read this scripture from John chapter 20, and this is an eyewitness account of the resurrection. Okay, so Jesus, yes, we know that he died. We know why he died. But also, um, we know that he rose again. And that's, and that's what we're celebrating today because it's Easter Sunday, his resurrection. And so we're going to read an eyewitness account of the disciple John who was actually there. So let's just read this together from John chapter 20. And John chapter 20 says, Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. Okay, so she was not expecting that. She came to mourn at Christ's tomb. She got there. The stone was rolled away. Um, she ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. And by the way, the disciple whom Jesus loved, that is the way that John refers to himself. He felt so loved by Jesus that he refers to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She, says, she said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. How disturbing for her to come and to find that the body was gone. She had no idea. Why would anybody want to take him? Where was he? Peter and the other disciple started out for the tomb. They were both running. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. So the linen, linen wrappings were the grave clothes that had been around Jesus. But he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside he also noticed the linen wrappings lying there while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first, that's John, also went in and saw and believed. For until then, they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. You know, even up to that point, until they actually saw the grave clothes, they, all those scriptures, all the things Jesus had said to them, it didn't occur to them until they actually saw the empty grave clothes there. And then they went home. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot, of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying, the angels asked her. Because they've taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they've put him. 
She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the, the gardener. Sir, she said, if you've taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Roboni, which in Hebrew means teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go find my brothers and tell them, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. So at this point, Mary is the only one who has seen the risen Christ. Verse 19 says, that Sunday evening, so that, that evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Okay, so the disciples each saw the Lord, and they rejoiced. And by the way, this wasn't just a vision. This wasn't a ghost. This was Christ bodily risen. And there's other occasions in Scripture. We're not going to read them all, but um, we're you know, they ate with Christ, they touched him, they, I mean, he was bodily present with them. He had risen. Now, <clears throat> the fact that Christ has risen is, is the complete game changer for us. And this is why it's such a big deal for us as Christians. You see, because we are sinners, because we are sinners, we are disqualified from heaven. God is holy. God is without sin. And there is no sin in heaven. There's no lying in heaven. There's no cheating. There's no immorality. There's, no anyth there's nothing that's sin in heaven. And God cannot abide. He cannot live with sin. Now, he loves us, but he's not, we're not able to be with him. And so there was this separation between us and the Father was caused by sin. The, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, the whole purpose for Christ coming into this world was to, to eliminate that separation between us and the Father. Jesus came to make a way for us to be with him in glory in heaven. Christ, in his resurrection, conquered sin and death. In the, in the Gospel of Mark, it tells us that the curtain in the temple was torn in two. The, the separation between God, man and God, was that bridge was gapped by Christ. And Jesus came, and in his resurrection, gives us hope for forgiveness and for eternal life. Okay, so it's, it's huge for us. It, it means that we can be restored to the Father, and it means that that at the end of this life, when this body of ours, physical body, passes away, we have a place in heaven through Christ. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is the way. And so we just rejoice in that, that, that we can have the hope of heaven, and we can have his wonderful presence, his spirit dwelling with us even now and in this life. Now, my dad was a pastor and a missionary, and um, I heard about Christ's resurrection since before I can remember and before I even knew what it meant. You know, I just uh, always heard about that. And, um, and I've shared this before, but I'll briefly share it again. You know, that when I was four years old, we lived in Nome, Alaska, and we had these people come to our church. They were talking about Jesus and how important it is to receive Christ into your heart and be born again. And, and that night when I was only four years old, I said to my mom, and I said, Mom, I want to invite Jesus into my heart. And she said, okay. So we, she was putting me in bed and, and we said a little prayer together. And I tell you, I don't really remember anything from when I was four years old except for that. 
I remember when we prayed, I did not see Jesus with my eyes, but the presence of Christ, of Jesus, was so powerful in that room. The peace, the joy, the I just can't explain it to you, but I'm just telling you that the resurrected Christ was there with us. And that is something that I still remember, you know, over 50 years later. And, and I will never forget it. Jesus was present in the room. Now, as I got older, I got away from the Lord. And as a teenager, I uh, sought the, the pleasures of this world. And I went into... Um, doing things that I shouldn't have done. I was seeking, you know, a lot of fun and so forth. And, but, um, but in it, I found no peace, no joy, no hope. It was dark. And finally, one night when I was 17, I was just, again, I was alone in my room. And I said, Lord, and the Holy Spirit was calling me. I said, Lord, I ask you to forgive me, Jesus I invite you into my life. I want to follow you from now on. And I threw away my drugs, and, I, um, and Jesus came. And praise the Lord, I, was, I rededicated my life to Christ. I was born again, I, um, and that's a long time ago. But let me tell you that God is faithful. He's risen, and he was right there in that room with me as well. And he's right here in this room with me now. And God is so good. I, we, we just can't say enough about how wonderful it is to have God with us in every situation. And now we're, going, we're in a time, we're in a very strange time of our history here with all this uh, COVID-19 virus, and, and it's a dark time. Let's admit it. It's a time when there's people that are dying of this virus. There's people that are sick. There's people that, you know, we have to practice social distancing. We have to I have to preach to an empty room here, <laughs> except for a couple of my helpers here. But, um, you know, hey, that's a little thing. There, there's people that have lost their jobs. Our economy is in, God help us. You know, and we could go on and on. We've all lost something because of this virus. Let's admit it. It's, it's a hard time, a dark time. It's a time when there's a lot of fear, a lot of, apprehension, a lot, wondering about what in the world's going to happen. You know, we could just go on with the fear. But I want to tell you that our risen Lord is present. And this is nothing for him. And he's with us in every situation. And I, I saw this clip, um, and I want to share it with you. It's, it's about someone that had uh, COVID or coronavirus and... Um, so I'm just going to show that at this time. I, I will tell you that the, the man who's sharing this testimony has quite the Irish accent. Now, thank God there's some subtitles, so you might have to read that. But um, just check this out and listen to this testimony. There was two nights particularly in the hospital when... I honestly didn't know whether I would make it or not. I was under incredible pressure. Got trips up and, and all that they needed to do. But I remember those nights particularly, really crying out to the Lord and, and asking Him to help me. And asking Him to even supernaturally just do something that would encourage me and bring me through and remember the next day i had a night from hell <laughs> and you got to understand this in, in the isolation ward when no one else can get in when no one else no pastor no friend no family members when no one else was allowed in God sent a cleaner. And all of a sudden this cleaner had come in and he was like a ray of sunshine. And he began to chat to me and he asked me how I was. And he began to talk to me and say to me about, about hanging in there. And then we got chatting and we got talking and he, and he turned around and he, 
and, and he said to me that he was a missionary in Nigeria for 14 years. And he began to tell me how God had saved many, many souls through his ministry. In just this last couple of years, he had found himself back home in Northern Ireland. And, and he's encouraged my heart. And he's telling me about souls and about the love of Jesus and the love of God. And I'm just sitting going, wow, when God needs to reach you, he knows exactly who is the right person. And in that moment of time, it was a cleaner. No one else could get in, God sent a cleaner. He left that den and he says this as he stood at the door. He says, son, can I pray for you? I says, absolutely. And as he began to pray at the door, he couldn't touch me. <clears throat> as he began to pray at the door, he began to ask God the Holy Ghost to visit me. He began to ask God to heal my body and touch my lungs. He stood at that doorway and he pleaded with God Almighty to spur my life and to continue to use me. And then he left. And what was incredible was that after he left, <clears throat> he periodically would walk past my window and give me a thumbs up. That night, I remember, I started to turn around. Could it have been the prayer of a cleaner? That night I began to desire a packet of prawn cocktail crisps, Kato. I asked the Lord, because no one could get to me. I says, Lord, is it possible that you could get me a packet of prawn cocktail crisps and a tin of coke? Because that night I began to turn. The next morning, cleaner came. He brought in a bag. And in that bag, was two oranges, a tin of coke, and a packet of prawn cocktail crisps. Don't tell me that God doesn't know. God knows our every need. He knows every desire. And he just passed the bag through the door. He, he couldn't come in. And he just says, it's a gift from the Lord. I sat up. I had them crisps. God is a God, folks, who is personal. He knows the deepest desires of our hearts. He knows what we have need of. I want to encourage you out there today. God knows what you have need of. He knows your heart's desire. He is an incredible Savior. Never underestimate what God can do with you. Like you to that cleaner, you know who you are if you ever see this. Thank you for hearing the voice of God and reaching someone like me. For you that are saved, keep your eyes upon him. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. And for you that doesn't know Jesus Christ, I would encourage you, lift up your eyes and look to heaven. And with a cry from your heart, say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And go home justified, just as if you had never sinned. May God bless you. And may you know the love of Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost. What a saviour. Amen. Amen. Well, isn't that wonderful? And, and like this gentleman said, you know, if you already know Jesus, keep your eyes on him. With whatever it is you're going through with trouble at work, trouble in, in finances, or whatever it might be, don't be afraid. 
The Lord is with you. He loves you. He's, he's risen. Yes, he's alive. And he's present with you. And you just reach out to him, call out to him. And he's going to help you and help all of us through this time. God is so good. Again, if you don't know Jesus, if you really don't have a relationship with him, maybe you've never invited him into your life. You just never did it before. Or maybe you did a long time ago and you got away from the Lord, kind of like how I had when I was young. Let me tell you, this is the day to come back to Jesus and to have his presence with you. This is the day. And all you need to do right now is to pray, to ask him to forgive your sins and to invite him to come into your life. And so we're going to say a prayer right now and wherever you're at, if you need to pray that, um, let's just pray this together. Here we go. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, please forgive me for all my sins. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my heart. Help me to be the person you made me to be, and thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you prayed to receive Christ, he's with you, and he'll never leave you or forsake you. And I, and I just encourage you, if, if you've uh, prayed that for the first time, or maybe um, rededicated your life to the Lord, we would love to hear about that here and rejoice with you. And you can just call us or contact us online, whatever, and, and we just uh, would love to hear that. Let me tell you, the Lord Jesus loves you. He is alive. He's risen. And once again, I just want to say that he'll never, ever leave you or forsake you. So may the Lord bless you the rest of this Easter day. Enjoy it. And I, I encourage you to share this, by the way, share this with as many people as you can. And um, we want it to go all over the world, you know, and it already probably is, but uh, we just want to want everyone to hear. And so let's just have a, a word of prayer as we finish up our Easter service here today. Let's pray once again. Heavenly Father, we just rejoice in your love for us. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are the firstborn. You are the first fruits. And as it says, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Even when we fall asleep, even when we die, Lord, we have the hope of the resurrection because of what you did for us. And, and Lord, what a wonderful promise it is. And we just pray for your anointing, your blessing on each one that's watching. And we say, thank you, God. We worship you. And we just commit our lives to you. And we say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Three in one. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the day. And we'll see you uh, once again. I, if you want to tune into the um, devotions, that's Monday through Friday at 8. Um, that's when it's live. You can catch it later if you need to. And, um, but anyway, we'll see you next week. Or you'll see me maybe. And, and God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, again for joining us this morning as we celebrate Easter together. It's been so wonderful uh, to see all of the people joining and see all the people commenting on our Facebook uh, stream. If you would like to share this with everybody, as Pastor Dan said, please do so. Um, you can also tell your friends, maybe who don't have a book, to look on our website at unitedcovchurch.org. And um, we also have a YouTube channel. If you type in United Co Covenant Church in YouTube, it should come up where we are posting our services there as well. Again, he is risen. He is risen indeed. We just thank you so much for joining us today. Have a very, very happy Easter for you and all of your family.